And today I want to show you how to make a geometry like this sphere adapt to the underlying uh, terrain or other geometry and this also works for particles like here you can see how they uh, walk along the surface. So um, if this seems familiar to you I did a little talk about the game Invisible Hours where we had this technology for the leaves for example they could adapt to the ground. Um, I didn't implement this in the game, but I recreated it here in Unreal and wanted to show you how this works. Um, yeah, and how this works is uh, you have to create a scene capture 2D. You drag and drop it into your scene, let it point downward. I enter the values here so that it's m m minus 90 degrees. And here to the location I point in. Uh, values which are easy remember rebel so it's zero zero and a height of one thousand so it's there up there and uh, capturing the scene but uh, we also change the projection type from perspective to orthographic and here we will uh, add um, a width which we can adjust later and uh, that's it for this guy uh, almost and then we create a canvas render target rename it in uh, RT adapt for example and this render target we assign here into the uh, scene capture and when we open the render target we don't see anything until we disable the alpha channel and now we see something and now we have to tweak this value to capture all the uh, the area we want to capture and in my case this is 1500 then we get everything what we need here Okay, that uh, uh, works great, we get the data, but we don't want to capture the scene color here, we want to capture the scene depth in R. Yeah, that's what we want. So I save this one and create a material. And open it and put it in here and then drag and drop the material uh, in here, or the render target in here. Okay. And just for visualization purpose, I will put this to unlit. Uh, it will, the black will appear now as this gray. And then I will put the emissive color into, uh, the render target into the emissive color. And what we will see is that we only see white values. The reason is that the depth values are really, really bright. They don't uh, just reach from zero to one. They reach from, I don't know, zero to several thousand. So we just see bright white. So what we have to do is we have to clamp and uh, adjust this, this uh, depth value range. And let me show this scene from the side. Here you see uh, the camera and here is our geometry. Here is uh, zero, the ground plane. And when I measure this, we need approximately like, I mean, yeah, obviously we only need a distance of thousands to capture everything or 1,500 to capture even the stuff below here, but 1,000 is okay. Um, so what we, let me go back to perspective. What we have to do here is we clamp these values first and I create a constant here and I name it uh, capture distance and I put in 1000 in here. So, and then we, we say, okay, we want to have a maximum of depth value of 1000, which is basically here. And then we divide these values by exactly this thousand to bring everything down to a range from zero to white, uh, from zero to one, uh, which makes that we actually see our high data in here. Uh, we see some shading here, right? So that's better for debugging to see if everything works. And then we can invert these values just to make uh, more sense out of the data because uh, we want to have that the ground for example is darker and yeah the higher the geometries reach in the scene the brighter they shall sure get and just for debugging to see if everything is really accurate i am i add this ceiling node which raises every value above zero to immediately one to right and what we will see is Let's just wait. Okay, what we see is that the uh, floor actually right now isn't captured, even though that our distance is set to 1000. Um, but when we set it to 1001, we will see that now everything should be um, working. Yeah, now the ground is also captured. Sometimes there's some, um, I don't know, some accuracy problem. So now we can delete this. 
uh, put this in here again and everything is fine by the way if you want to use um, the blueprint node capture scene uh, sometimes there seem to be a little bug when you set it to specific values so i will link this thread i don't know if it's still accurate or if it's still up to date maybe the bug is already fixed because this is 4.13 uh, but uh, i wa just wanted to mention that there is this thread if you have some problems by uh, doing that with blueprints um, yeah here you will find some information okay but uh, for us this everything works here we have our data everything is fine so what we have to do now is we have to map these data in world space because when we move our object around we have to tell it uh, what height actually is below it in the um, uh, in world space right in the world so that's actually pretty easy we can just create an absolute world position node create a mask to only get um, X and Y position and now we divide these values by the width of our orthogonal view right here we entered uh, 1500 here so let me do this this is basically the the width of our our high map the width and height of our high map texture so let me do that and now we to debug it we should show this texture in the world and what i do now is i first i uh, select the um, capture scene and disable that every frame capture every frame yeah okay we want to disable that because now we want to um, create a new plane here and we don't want that this is captured in our high data in our high map data uh, and now we just apply our material here oh and now we see the scaling already um, is correct but um, these two cubes here are these guys so it's actually a little bit uh, rotated so let me just move this one below I don't know why it gets black some sometimes uh, we have to rotate our camera to um, really adapt to the scene let me see I'm not sure what's correct here I think minus 90 degrees here should do it and now let's see if this got updated correctly yeah now this works here are our cubes that's fine but the texture is offset and when we look from top the problem is that our render target starts here right where the camera is here starts our 0 uh, to 1 UV space and therefore the um, uh, texture is offset because it should start here right but that's easy we can just um, offset our values if by adding here oops before the divide we add two values and uh, this is just half the size of our maximum width and height of the render target which in this case is minus 750 and here again for x and y and this should do it okay now our uh, texture is aligned with our world with our geometry and we can move our um, uh, our debug plane and see that it's really accurate so right we can see the high map data is perfectly uh, mapped to um yeah the, the geometries or the world okay cool so that's fine and now what we have to do is we can create a sphere where's our sphere here is our sphere and we assign the material and now we can say that we want to have these values not just used as uh, as emissive value but used as world or position offset before that we have to multiply the values because right now they are reaching from zero to one but we want to have these values reach from uh, 0 to 1000 because this is the distance we actually captured right so basically what we do we just multiply our values again uh, after we clamped and, and we resize them or we scaled them so when we do that the sphere should already get uh, pushed a little bit around in the scene and what we see now that this the sphere is, is pushed around that's correct but it's pushed in different directions and we want to have it only pushed upwards so what you can do is you just create a little vector which has uh, one in the 
in the blue channel which means upward basically and then we multiply our high values with the vector and apply this and our sphere is now pushed upwards and when we move it it's already working it's adapting to the height of the ground that's really good um, the only thing is it should be adapt like adjusted exactly to the ground right and when I I, I could of course just adjust it here manually and see that it's working somehow but that's not how we want it we want to have it correct right so what you can do you can do is you create a constant and um, this is one and you subtract the object position from that uh, object position in world space so what this does is basically it uh, resets the height of the object or the height position to zero to the ground plane and this gets added here and from that uh, the sphere gets pushed upwards and now you see that the sphere is already adjusted it's uh, yeah with, with its uh, pivot it's perfectly aligned to the ground you can't adjust here the, the height anymore actually there is a little bit of a problem you see what happened to the shadow not sure how you can fix that maybe you have to manually adjust um, the pivot afterwards but yeah to, to get the shadow right but for just the vertex position everything is perfect right now if you want to have the, uh, the sphere um, uh, uh, touching with the lowest point to the to the, um, to the underlying surface and not like with its uh, pivot you can you subtract here with the bounds of the object like so and then put it here okay now you see the object is there you can't adjust the height but uh, yeah our sphere adapts to the ground when we move it around in the scene which is really really nice and you can use it for all kinds of effects when you need something like this here's again the material in its full beauty oh, let's zoom a little bit into it kind of hard yeah this is the material uh, kind of easy actually it's not super complicated and uh, yeah and this works as well as uh, for the particles uh, actually the particles are using my old material let's try with the new material oops let's try with the new material yeah as you can see here you have some problems when you uh, use the optic bounds uh, i think this is not working in my old material here i didn't do it so I um, just let me assign this again and here without the pivot offset it looks like this without the uh, pivot offset uh, now the particles are sticking inside the geometry but just by adding a location pivot offset and then making it minus 0.5 uh, the particles are pushed upwards so that now they touch the ground with their lowest vertices basically yeah okay um, by the way, if you want to know uh, what was the problem here in this thread. So for some reason, the guy couldn't use the uh, scene depths in R, what we used, what really uh, worked well for us, right? So he found an interesting workaround, which uh, I just want to present. Um, you can set your little um, uh, scene capture. Instead of scene depth R, you can set it to final color LDR. And then you can create a material which I call post one, which is a post process material. You can change it here, post process. And in here you can use the scene depth. And then you do the same what we did before, right? Uh, you, you clamp the, the values by um, thousands, which is our scene capture distance. And then you divide by that like so, and then do the little um, invert. And with that, that's that's fine already so and this you can uh, assign to the scene capture in the post poses material you can put an one here in the asset reference you just create post like so and interestingly what you see is that it's not uh, really working and that he mentioned in the in the thread that this workaround 
uh, only works when you activate um, let me see when you activate capture every frame now the depth um, values are captured if you set it to uh, not capture every frame then you don't uh, get the post-processing depth values and this may be a problem for performance reason luckily in our case the um, uh, the scene cap the scene depths in R worked well also without like the capture every frame and everything is good so yeah that's an interesting technology I hope you liked what you saw uh, you learned something and yeah let me let me uh, have a comment if you think that's useful that would be awesome to hear back from you okay bye